muggy streets of New York. All right, people, we've heard your request for us using voiceover system, so this is us testing our options right now until we get a real grown-up microphone in. So I'm just showing you right now with Jeffrey's hand how reflective this gold is. It's probably the best you can get as far as like a gold mirror finish that's like $7.95. This particular one is by Montana. Looks like this. It's gold, it's shiny, the can's dirty, but this is what we like to use for our base coats, I guess. When you see us using gold in the piece, it's usually by Krylon, but we just wanted to base this out in gold all the way around. And then we added the push pins on the bottom in the corners and taped it off in order to make finishing the bottom easier. We also like to use push pins in this fashion so that you can see there's a clear ledge under the bottom where we can like lift up easily. Yeah. Yes, that's the word I'm looking for. Yeah. So here we are, all set up. Right. So have your gloves. The ink that we're using is by Doc Martens. It's Hydra's. Focus. This one is in teal. We like to use inks because they have a really great color and they're transparent. The white we're using is by Art District. It's just a regular titanium white. And we like to use this because it's thicker and it gives us good cells. Typically, no guarantees. It always does something crazy because resin. Um, the art, nope, the resin that we're using is by Envirotech Light for this piece and most of the other one. But it is two part resin, as usual, it's a one to one ratio. So, since this resin is two part, it's a one to one ratio resin. You have to measure it out exactly just so if you don't. We'll have a lot of problems. I kind of go through this on every video, but I harp on it because it is so important. Make sure it is equal parts because if it is not, you're going to have a problem. If you use too much resin, you're going to end up with weak spots that will leak onto your piece. And if you use too much hardener, your resin is going to set too fast. So it's super important that you use equal parts, measure it thoroughly. Also important to note is that you should always super mix it thoroughly every time, all the time, because if you don't, you'll end up with weak spots in your resin and you'll end up having to sand it off, scrape it off, and start over, which is never a good time. So just be thorough, thorough, thorough about it and you don't have to worry about weak spots or anything like that. Make sure you scrape the sides, the stick, the bottom of your cup mixing apparatus so that you can make sure everything is equally mixed. If you bake, you should not have a problem with this at all. Same science, not exactly the same, but you know, you know. So I'm thinning out the clear resin that we're using because I want it to be able to spread really equally over the gold that we have laid down. The gold that we're using is really tricky because once anything's on it, it will show like track on it. So we wanted to have a good pour on it to try to reduce the odds of it leaving lines about where it's been. So trial and error as usual.
So we always use a heat gun or a torch to reliquify or get bubbles out and move our canvas around. I'm also bringing in a blow dryer to further facilitate our moving the resin around all the way to the edges. And you can see here that we left it in one spot for too long and it kind of picked up in some spots. Track lines, that sounds horrible, track lines, but I don't know what else to call it. And I'm sure people can see it. Anyways, so next we add some of our color. We're starting with white because we find that putting white down on top of clear blends um, itself easier to lacing and cells. People ask us all the time how much pigment we use for our colors and it really honestly depends on how opaque you want things, things, your shades, your colors, your resin. Um, our inks, we tend to use one dropper and with the white we use even less because it's thicker, it's a heavy body. If you use too much of it, then you'll end up with like a marshmallow glove consistency. And to correct that, you can put more resin in it or you can hit it with a heat gun for a second. Also, disclaimer, don't use a heat gun without parental supervision. You'll burn yourself like I do almost every time. So anyways, once you have your colors on, Put some heat on it and tilt it around so that it gives itself um, a really fluid together direction. We also like to use a blow dryer to further move our pigments around. It also is a great way to generate selling and releasing your resin. So now you can see where some of these belts have popped up, where the lacing has popped up. And since we didn't use any gold on the top part of this, there isn't any veining. But we don't have any more clear resin, so I don't know how we're going to incorporate that yet. We may just decide to streak it on. I'm not sure how to do that yet, but. We're still working with it. This is usually the point in a pour or acrylic, actually, nope, resin, that people tend to freak out a little bit because you only have so much time to work with it before it starts to set. And the resin that you may have left over becomes useless. But we're gonna see what we can do with some gold. So, we figured it out. We spilled some spray paint onto where we had puddles of resin that had come off of this piece. And Jeff has picked it up with a paint can opener and ran it through the piece. We reliquified it with the heat gun real quick so that we didn't bake our resin. And he just hooked some up and ran it through the piece. You could probably use um, a popsicle stick or a dropper probably, but we we're running short on time and this is what we had handy. So that's what we used. And we are all about telling you exactly what we did, whether it works or not. And that's what we did. Well, I think it works better because of the hook on the end of the, the can opener. It, like, it holds the paint. You can just, as you run it through it, it just kind of, you can see the bigger spots where you start and when you finish, it's kind of thinned out. And that's kind of what I was looking for, the thin stuff. 
the, the, the bigger parts work. Like it depends on how much you have on there. In any case, it it turned out looking really good in the piece, and it's definitely a technique that we are going to use in the future. And probably try to refine, find a different but similar way to apply this. Maybe. So now that we're happy with where the gold is for the most part, we're going to hit it with a heat gun one more time, pop any leftover bubbles from our stirring and adding, and also tilt it a couple more times just to further incorporate the gold into the piece as a whole. Well, let's get out of here. here she is, the set and final piece in all of her glory. She turned out really well very smooth finish. We've got cells, we've got lacing, superficial veining that we added right at the end, right before our resin setup. But we really love this piece. She sold really quickly and we hope you guys like our tutorial. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment box below. Thank you so much for all of our supporters and our recent donors, actually every donor. Um, it really helps us to keep our dream alive of living off of our artwork and we can't thank you guys enough for watching. Stay tuned!